Hello and welcome. My name is Christian Adams and I'm a developer advocate on the Google Earth Outreach and Crisis Response teams. Today we're going to talk about animating satellite imagery for crisis reporting, science communication, environmental education, and more. Let's get started. This is imagery of a wildfire in Southern California in August 2020. Seeing it animated like this makes it very easy to understand what is happening, like where the fire is spreading, as well as how the smoke is moving to nearby communities and across state lines. You might think it's difficult to create something like this, but given the available satellite data and the tools we have available, it can be relatively easy. So let's look at some of the geostationary satellite imagery and how we can use it in Earth Engine. We'll start by looking at a typical Google map of Southern California. This one goes from Los Angeles to San Diego. If we switch to the satellite view, this is typical of the static imagery you see. A single image or scene captured by the satellite is like the orange box there, covering about half the city. And if we zoom way down to one small part of that image, we can see objects down to the size of buildings, trees, and cars. Images like these are captured by commercial high-resolution imaging satellites. They tend to be in low Earth orbits, a few hundred kilometers above the surface of the Earth. At that altitude, they orbit quite quickly, going around the world about once every 90 minutes. So for about 45 minutes of the orbit, they are on the sunny side of the planet and can take images of the specific places they've been programmed to capture. A geostationary satellite, on the other hand, is in a geosynchronous orbit at 35,786 kilometers above the Earth, which is the sweet spot where the orbit of the satellite exactly matches the rotation of the Earth, meaning that the satellite is always over the same place on the surface of the Earth. And it's far away enough that it can capture the entire disk of the Earth in one image, like this one with the land, oceans, clouds, and all. And if we zoom back in to the Southern California, this is what the image looks like. Now it's obviously very low resolution with the rough pixels nearly visible here. So the trade-off is lower spatial resolution for much better temporal resolution, as well as broader image coverage. Here we get an image of the full disk about every 10 minutes. So this is the kind of animation we can create using about a half day worth of such imagery from a geostationary satellite. The specific satellites we'll be working with are the GOES satellites, which are part of a joint effort between NASA and NOAA. Their spatial resolution is about 2 kilometers per pixel, and again, they capture the full disk of the Earth about every 10 minutes. There are two GOES satellites at this time, GOES-16, also known as GOES-East, which looks down on the Americas and includes parts of the North Atlantic and Eastern Pacific. And there's GOES-17, also known as GOES-West, which is focused more over the Eastern Pacific Ocean, but includes part of North America and some Pacific Islands. You can see here the ovals on the right, where the full disk images are projected and stretched to fit on the flat Mercator projection used in Google Maps. And here are some links you can explore later with more information about the GOES satellites and their imagery. So how can we access this imagery and turn it into these interesting animations? Well, our Google Earth Engine platform contains both an extensive data catalog as well as computational capabilities to easily process imagery for you very quickly in the Google Cloud. I'm going to walk you through building a script to bring in some GOES imagery and to visualize it correctly, and then to animate it, to choose a time frame and an area, and create an animation either as an animated GIF or as a video file. Here is the Google Earth Engine home page. Let's go to the data catalog. And as you can see, there are many categories of data, from climate and weather to imagery such as Landsat, Sentinel, MODIS, 
and a little bit of high resolution imagery. Geophysical data sets from terrain and land cover to lights at night, population, etc. Let's go back up to weather. Here we see numerous satellites and data products, including several GOES products. This one says that it is that it has data from 2017 through today. The source is NOAA, and we can find similar data sets using the tags. There is also some sample code which I can copy. Let's put that into the Earth Engine script editor. I can simply paste it in here. And we can see that this code sets up some parameters for visualizing GOES data, applies a scale and an offset to the data set, adds a green band, and most importantly, sets the collection and the specific image from that collection in this case one from 2020, and then adds it as a layer on the map. Let's run it. There's the data, visualized on the fly. We can zoom in and see the typical fog off the coast and sunny inland. All right, let's clear that script out of here and we'll start building up our own script for the animation. The first thing I will paste in here is some required inputs for our script. We have the Go 17 collection and the Go 16 collection. We can enable one and comment out the other, but for this example, I'll stick with Go 17. We have a start time and an end time, as well as the time zone defined. We have some animation parameters, such as the size of the output image, the frames per second is 18, the area, which is the geometry for the area we'll be exporting, and the projection that we would like it in. As well as some visualization parameters for the colors. Now let's bring in that geometry. I can paste it down here and the code editor recognizes it as a geometry and allows me to convert it to an import at the top of my script. We can see that it's a rectangle with five coordinates, the last one being the same as the first. Now let's bring in all of the code necessary to visualize the data that comes from the GOES satellites. You don't need to worry about the details of this, but let me show you what's going on. The GOES data has a blue band and a red band, but it does not contain a green band. So in order to generate a standard RGB image, we need to calculate an approximation of green from some of the other bands that are available. This section sets up the state and country borders that we'll be laying over top. Here's a function to scale the GOES bands. And here's a function to compute the green band. This function applies the visualizations to the collection. And then this section of code actually implements those by filtering by the start and end date, applying the scale and offset, adding the green band, and mapping the visualization across the collection. We end up with this collection that's ready to animate. The collection contains an image for each 10 minute time step in the GOES data, and each image has the green band added and an appropriate visualization applied. So let's see what we have there. 
we can add two lines of code where we select one image from the collection, the first image, and we add it as a layer on the map. I'm going to run that. It takes a moment. I'm going to turn off the geometry for now. And boy, that looks dark. But if we look up here, we can see that in this image, the sun is rising over the Rocky Mountains while it's still dark in California. So let's pick an image that's later in the day. We'll filter our collection again. And we'll grab one of the dates that we used up here. Instead of starting it at 12.30, we'll start at 15.30. And we need an ending time, which we'll set to 16.30. But we're still only going to pull the first image and lay it on the map. Let's run that one. There we go. That looks better. Now, again, we have the fog over the ocean and the sunny cities of Southern California. But that's just one image, so let's figure out how to animate this. So I'm going to get rid of this code here and paste in the code for our animation. Here you go. First we set up some parameters for our output. That's the max size in pixels, the export area, the frames per second or speed, and the projection all of which are required for generating our GIF. We're going to write out a little text, and then we'll write that GIF out directly to the console tab over here on the right. So let's try running that. It will take a moment to generate the image. It's going through the entire collection, pulling in the images that match the dates and times we selected, applying the visualization code, and putting the resulting set of images together into this GIF, which automatically loops through. Great. Now, let's export this in a different way. The last bit of code here generates an MP4 video and saves it to Google Drive using the export video to drive function. Again, we use our collection, and we give it a description, file name, and folder to put it in. And we tell it the same speed, size, and region to export. When we run this one, we get a task here in our Tasks tab. When I click Run on that, it lets me confirm my selections, click Run again, and it kicks off that task, which takes a few minutes to run. And you end up with an MP4 file in Google Drive. And here is my video in Google Drive, ready to play, share, or download. OK, let's save this code for later, in case we need it again. And don't worry, we'll share links to the script with you at the end of this session. There's an important limitation to keep in mind when generating animations in Earth Engine. That is that Earth Engine can only process so many pixels into an animation like a GIF or a video. So the more frames you have in your animation, or the larger the output image size, the sooner you will hit the limit. Therefore, if you want a large image, you will only be able to have a few frames. Or if you want many, many frames, then you'll have to make your image smaller and smaller. If you generate a GIF and get a broken image icon in the console, it probably means that you hit the limit and need to try again with fewer frames or a smaller image. An alternative, if you want both a large image and many frames, is to export a series of static images, one for each frame, and then assemble them into a GIF or video in other software. That will let you export images as large and numerous as you want, and then combine them outside of Earth Engine. 
Now, let's take a look at some of the other things we can do with animating Go's imagery. Here's that same fire that we used in our demo, except with a larger area showing multiple states. This is also Go's true color animation, although here the fire progression or fire detection data is overlaid on top. This is an example of a moving view frame to animate both the imagery and the view frame, in this case following a dust storm that moved across the panhandle regions of Oklahoma and Texas. And here is a full disk animation where you can see the sunlit side of the globe moving during the day, as well as a solar eclipse shadow moving across the southern hemisphere. And finally, here are three days worth of animations of Tropical Storm Claudette, which blew through the southeastern U.S. just this past weekend. I pulled the imagery for each of the three days separately, and you could find ways to stitch it together and cut out the nighttime sections if you wanted to. There are also ways to add labels or text to the images, for example, to embed the date or time into each frame of the animation. So there you go. It's relatively easy to access massive amounts of satellite imagery through Google Earth Engine and to easily process it and generate compelling animations for use in reporting, storytelling, education, and other purposes. We hope that you try it out and that it works well for you. And we look forward to your questions. Thank you very much.